Hey everybody, uh, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number two. We're taking a, another dive into the old ranked ladder today. I, I assure you we'll be back to Expeditions uh, starting with the next video, but uh, I've been having a good time out here with Constructed, and so I wanted to uh, jump into a few of these before uh, we... we reach uh, expedition number 500. And so uh, if you caught the previous video, we were taking kind of a dabble with the uh, the kind of big overwhelm strategy, right? There's a lot of uh, kind of uh, burn slash overwhelm stuff added to the new set, uh, mainly looking at bros like Tusk Speaker here. And, and in the previous video, we were trying to take advantage of that with, uh, uh, with Noxus using uh, Sejuani and uh, Udyr uh, as our, or no, it was Udyr and... Uh, Draven as our champions of choice, and then uh, we were looking to give our champions that didn't have overwhelm, uh, overwhelm with the Udir spells. And so I wasn't happy with a, a lot of the execution of the deck. Uh, it was, you know, fine, but uh, it didn't feel super strong. Uh, but there were a lot of things that I did like about it, and, and Tusk Speaker was kind of the big one. Uh, and uh, I, I was really happy with a lot of the overwhelm aspects of it. And then we were really just kind of like, well, I'd probably rather just play Sejuani instead of um, a, a, instead of uh, Udir. And, and I've been you know pretty spot on with that. I've been able to play this for I don't know twenty or so games, and I've been pretty happy with this the whole way. Sejuani is uh, not incredibly easy to flip. Uh, but if we are able to sequence these kind of turns to where uh, we play the Tusk Speaker on our uh, opponent's turn, we can play Pokey Stick on our opponent's turns, and that makes it much easier to uh, to flip Sejuani on like turn eight or so. Uh, and so I've been pretty happy with that. I've uh, been pretty happy with Nar. Uh, he he does come down cheap and is uh, relatively easy to flip. Uh, kind of one of the things that we see with how these deck sequence is uh, you'll, you'll play a two drop on two, you'll play a two drop on three, and then that leaves you with two spell mana for a real long time. So if you play a two, a two, and then Nar, uh, you you know you're mainly looking for the option to troll chant, uh, but you can still slap pokey sticks in there, uh, giving that's how you you sequence out your turns. And so uh, yeah, kind of like step two that I've been wanting to try with this is I've been trying to meme it up a bit with Papercraft Dragon, uh, passing out this this double strike can be incredibly powerful. Uh, I was trying to dabble around with a bunch of like elusives and stuff, and nothing really worked, but uh, the the next kind of most powerful place we can go with this is just slapping it on an, onto an overwhelm. Uh, and that does work out here uh, quite nicely. You're able to just close out bunches of games to where you make a 7-7 uh, a, a seven, seven overwhelm double strike with something like Ancient Yeti. Uh, slapping it on Sejuani is quite nice. Uh, I, I've been uh, reasonably pleased with the Papercraft Dragon. It does at times feel like it's a bit of a win more card. You know, we might just realistically be happy to cut both of them, play three Alpha Wild Claws, and then still just keep this uh, kind of moderate Bandle City package, but uh, I've been pretty happy with the kind of blowout factor with this. And it is the thing that I haven't been able to, uh, you know, like theory craft on how to, to really pull off. But one of the things I've been uh, kind of surprised with, which was kind of powerful, is whenever you hit these uh, attach units with an Omen Hawk. Uh, <laughs> and so there may be something to this at some point where we're, say, playing like Omen Hawks and playing uh, Starlit Sears or whatever we can do to put like the plus one plus ones into our deck. Like I was kind of leaning towards. Um, the, the plunder thing that gives plus one, plus one, and then draws a unit. Uh, but it is kind of interesting when that plus one, plus one lands on, say, like Papercraft Dragon, and then we can use those plus ones to boost things that are uh, already on the board. And so uh, another thing to just kind of keep in the back of our heads, I don't think that that's a, a thing to really build around, but as, you know, more attached cards are created, more plus uh, boosts to your deck kind of things are made, or even if it's, say, like a hand buff instead of a, uh, a deck buff, uh, it is kind of interesting with these attached cards. And so that was pretty cool. Uh, and then in terms of this deck here, uh, before we dive into the games, I feel like there's a bit of flex spots here. Uh, I've been having quite a bit of trouble uh, beating formidable decks, which you can uh, imagine are quite popular right now, given the uh, uh, given the amount of uh, new, new deck brewing and the like going on out there. So I have added in Rhymefang Wolves. Uh, I'm not entirely sold on this idea, uh, the, the meta is uh, fairly wide open right now, and so I can certainly uh, uh, see the argument for just saying, fuck it, 
uh, we'll ignore that formidable is a deck. We'll accept that you know we're like uh, a twenty five percent favorite to win, uh, and uh, just give up on this idea of Rhymefang Wolf because so many of these cards are just so awkward against formidable. There's Ice Veil Archer, which doesn't do anything. Troll Chants only do things like half the time, uh, and, and so that lands to be kind of awkward. But there's so much of it going on out here. I do want to try the Rhymefang Wolf. Uh, the Ice Veil Archer could be looked as a flex card. Uh, it's not something that we look to be. Uh, super important. I have, uh, I did just take out one Alpha Wild Claw and one Mighty Poro to make room for these Rangfang Wolves. That seems uh, pretty okay to me. And then out here in the removal package, I'm still not entirely sure if I wouldn't like to just have uh, three copies of Three Sisters. Uh, it's kind of an awkward space now for many Morph, right? The, the the big things running around, there's the formidable decks, and then there's a bunch of like Yumi and attach style things to where uh, even if you many Morph a unit that has a Papercraft Dragon attached to it, that unit's still going to be a 5-5 a, a five, five Double Striker, which is kind of a real deal. Uh, and so many Morph, you know, drops a bit in value, but you can Entomb those units. And, and Entomb plays kind of uh, double, double value, if you will, in terms terms of being able to deal with these attached things for a turn, uh, and then you typically just win the game at that point anyways, uh, or as we look to play like removal spells on things blocking our overwhelms, uh, slapping it in tomb can be a, uh, a a nice way to take advantage of that. And so uh, it is expensive to go have to go about it that way, but you know, that's the, the versatility we're looking for out of Three Sisters. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not entirely sold on these numbers here. We may may need to have, like, three Three Sisters. Friendship may want to go for another berry or for another um, uh, Frostbite, but Friendship does play extremely well with the likes of Papercraft Dragon, and so I'm kind of happy with the one copy of it here. Uh, and then uh, to that kind of same vein of, of hitting things with... Um, and tomb, Nars flip into the stun thing is kind of useful. And so I'm not entirely opposed uh, to just playing the Nar flip card as well. It's so weird to say, hey, maybe I'll play a stun. <laughs> but uh, I, I've been fairly uh, impressed with Wallop when we've been able to play it. This is turning in to at least today being a fairly go tall format with all of the, the pantheons and the uh, attached style things running around that uh, having these stuns for a big tempo play can be quite nice. But that's what that's what that is and such. So let's go ahead and, and jump in and, and see how these things go. I've been enjoying this deck. Uh, I think uh, you might like it too. And so, yeah, it's been pretty good. I've been having a good time with the constructed format. It's uh, it's certainly different, not just playing Expedition all the time and being like, fuck, it's Shivana. <laughs> but uh, it's it's been good. I, I can get in. I can get into this. All right, up against the old Yumi. Let's take a peek and see if uh, some of these Entomb versus Minimorph kind of things will come up. And so as far as these starts go, you most certainly want to hit a two drop. Uh, I'm okay with hanging on to one Ancient Yeti. Getting to play these on turn four can be pretty big. Uh, and I think I'd rather hang on to the Yeti than hang on to Nar. Um, if we just kind of like piece together a curve to where maybe we play Ancient Yeti on turn six instead of turn four, then he's ultra cheap at that point. Uh, whereas Nar is always kind of expensive. But, uh, you know, nice little collection of cards here. Uh, I'm curious how the things like the Rhymefang Wolf play out uh, in these matches where it's not optimal, right? We aren't playing a ton of Frostbites. We don't have loads of ways to uh, get a good challenge with these. But, I don't know, if this just comes down and trades with a unit, I'm probably uh, okay with it as we get to kind of like pick and choose that unit. And then I'm also okay with it in terms of... Uh, you know, if we're making like a big overwhelm attack and our opponent has like Galio on board, then we're able to come out here and uh, hook the Galio way down to the right and feel a little bit safer. Uh, so coming out of these, I don't expect much out of Poison Dart. I do like Lightning Rushes with the Conchologists, but uh, I think we're just going to get the most value out of this wall up here. Uh, the, again, these uh, Yumi-based decks tend to be, you know, real go-tall kind of numbers. And so, you know, if you play a five drop and then you attach a Yumi to it, that's nine mana sunk, like sunk into one unit. Uh, and the the big tempo plays with Wallop can be uh, pretty sweet. Nothing better than a pretty sweet big tempo play. <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here. 
This is kind of interesting as well. I, I don't know if you've noticed the new board, you know, switched over from the the Winter Wonderland board today. It is actually snowing out here in Kansas City, which is kind of, uh, you know, nice to, to have the the snowboard, <laughs> as you will. But we're in the uh, the arcade season out here. I figured I'd switch it up to the uh, the arcane board. I've been pretty happy with this decision so far. <laughs> it's sort of the, the, the more important decisions we could make on the day. And everybody has the same line. He had to have just drawn this conchologist, right? He would have played it last turn uh, if that wasn't the case. And then I'm just going to bank the mana out of this. Uh, if he wants to attack, that's fine. But I'm looking to just bank this mana before we drop Nar. Looking good. Not doing too much in terms of leveling Sejuani, but uh, Nar works here nicely. I was, uh, I was surprised with Nar. I... Uh, initially looked at the, into him and didn't realize he flipped on round end, right? Uh, and so I thought he was just going to be like flipping back and forth rapidly and uh, you wouldn't have too much decision into how this was going to work, right? Uh, I, I thought that we were going to get into this space here as to where he's on the wrong side on the attack token, but he he, he does it at round end and not round start on his flip back to the, uh, the normal side and he's much stronger than I uh, initially had thought. Pretty good. Of all, the, of all the champions in the new set that looking to get nerfed, I, I have to put my money on Nar as being the one to, <laughs> the one to drop to three attack uh, or, or to, to two health, however they feel about going about that kind of thing. But see, this is exactly what I mean in the power and wallop. Uh, we can just shut this thing down. Uh, gets to, he can't play anything else this turn. And then we can say play like a Rhymefang Wolf and something else uh, to, to try and kill this next turn. Say no, thank you. Bust disagrees <laughs> with with this attack happening. He says, "Oh fuck, Bust bringing out them wallops." <laughs> oh fuck. Did did we get the wallop concession? Is that what just happened here? Oh my gosh! Oh, that's the that feels good. Okay, he didn't he didn't just quit? <laughs> Comes in with a take heart. Okay, so how much do we want to invest in this? Right, he's getting fairly invested into hothead here. Uh, I mean, we don't even have to like really hook this with a rhyme thing. Well, like we can uh, come at it with ancient yeti. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm looking at here. Coming into next turn, we can have like six mana banked up. I think that seems fine. Like if we're going to get into a big battle with the hothead, I, I think this is okay. Like it, it doesn't, we don't have the mana banked up. Like we kind of blew a bit of our load onto the, the hothead here to, uh, to, to keep him from attacking this turn. Uh, and so, it, you know, if we don't have that spell mana banked up, it makes it tough to play these mini morphs and three sisters in the like next turn. But... I think this is still fine. Just looking to open here. We'll play the Ancient Yeti, open onto the Hothead. Uh, go ahead and... I, I think we want to go ahead and pop him with the Flash Freeze, but I think I'm just happy enough with a trade. I guess if we really want to, uh, we can see... We could just try to win the game instead, right? You can come in for 11. If we say... Well... We're a little short. I, I would thought we were going to be a little bit closer. We could do like the Rhinefang Wolf down to try and do some shenanigans, but I think this is okay. Well, I guess it, what what I'm kind of thinking of now is like, what if we entomb the Hothead and then we punch in for this extra three damage? Uh, I, I think that's just enough of a tempo play to probably take this game over. Let's go for it. To drop it as though it is hot. So he'll get he'll be able to come out and block with the hot head on his next attack, but we should just be like super wide at that point and not even worried about it. You agree, Kitty? Yeah, Kitty agrees. Here she is. Everybody's wondering. She says, What up? What up, Nar? 
I am just as just as fierce as Meganar. All right, GG. So there was like some downside to that game, right? We had those Rhymefang Wolves. We we could have uh, maybe found something a little more. Uh, you know, I was thinking of just like another Ice Veil Archer or something that would have been okay there, but you know, that turned out that turned out fine. We won we won the game pretty handily. Oh, right. So we don't want three sisters. That's a little too expensive. Uh, and otherwise, this is probably okay. I'm not, like, the hugest fan of Ice Veil Archers. Uh, this is actually one of the cards that, like, I feel kind of okay with cutting. But I, I do kind of like the interactivity. It feels more like a six drop in this kind of format to where, you know, opponent has a Mega Gnar down, but they, they don't open. And then you get the chance to just pop it with the Ice Veil Archer. Like, that, that's what seems to be pretty uh, pretty useful in these terms. All right, opponents bring in the unscarred reavers. We we do want to play these uh, these tough speakers on our opponent's turn whenever we get the chance, just to try and help us level up the Sejuani. Uh, this makes it a little different. Uh, I don't want to have to play the tough speaker and just have it trade with the wanderer. So we could look to just add conchologist instead, but um, I'm kind of okay with just trading. But we don't have Sejuani just yet. I think this is fine. Fey Aid is surprisingly... Oh, this isn't the one I like, the Owlcat. I like the Manifest and Owl. That one is a, a, a pretty good uh, target to hit. Let's go with the Wallop. Don't make attacks like this. Don't, don't attack with this Unscarred Reaver. This is never positive, right? Uh, if at worst, you're dealing zero damage. Or I guess, you know, at best for you, you're dealing zero damage. At worst, I have something to interact with you, right? He has no mana. There's, there's no reason to attack with that dum-dum. Pretty tempting to add a Rhymefang Wolf just to try and take down the Reaver, but I, I have to imagine that he's probably got uh, some kind of interactivity. And that's, this like sequences really well with our mana as to where we can play the Tusk Speaker here. Uh, we'll see if we get a positive attack or not. Looks like we'll get something. Like, maybe... Man, I'm just like really looking to play these Rhymefang Wolves now, but it's so easy for them to have uh, the likes of a... Uh, uh, like, Transfusion... To, to make our attacks here kind of awkward. But no, this sequence is nicely now. You know, we could play Gnar here. Uh, the following turn, we have the Rhinefang Wolf Icefell Archer if we want. Uh, and then ideally, you know, we would have a Troll Chant built up, but a little short on the Troll Chant for the moment. Okay. Let's see if he has that Elixir of Iron. Very bold. Very bold. So now it's like, do we even bother with trying to do something with Ice Veil Archer? Uh, I mean, we can lead with Tusk Speaker and just kind of see what happens here, but... It's, kind of, it's been kind of awkward. It's like, <laughs> we, we have the Rhymefang Wolf and opponents just hanging out with all of these zero attack units, but we know it's not really like we're running into zero attack units here. That just looks like a little bit, uh, a little bit too sketch, right? I, I feel like he's got, got to have like a transfusion or a whirling death or something here, and I, I'm not ready to, uh, to just jump in when we don't have any mana. Oh, easy peasy. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, yeah, man, we, we do have all this snow out here today. It's it's so wild. Like, the last time it was supposed to snow out here, they made this big prediction to where we were going to get, like, 6 to 16 inches of snow. And I think we managed to get, like, 4. And so, <laughs> like, at the, at the end of the day, it's not like I'm going to go out, like, sleigh riding or, or, or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to have, like, the big, like, massive pile of snow out there. It's always nice to go and... Uh, kind of enjoy the silence and see how it uh, it looks. It's very pretty and stuff, uh, but it's just kind of a bummer when it didn't come about. And then uh, today we were supposed to get like it was initially like four to six, and then it was up to like six to eight. And it was so wild. Like uh, I went to go to the gym this morning, and there was just like absolutely nothing. 
and then it was like I, I started to get ready so that, uh, uh, that always takes like you know a half hour 45 minutes or so and uh, by the time I went to go and uh, get in the car and go it was like completely uh, covered with all the roads and everything so it's like fuck I'm not gonna risk it like that's the always the time when it's the worst is when uh, uh, the the snow like first comes down and they haven't got to treat it Life can be hard, but we got to we got to sit around and play some children's card games instead. So <laughs> we have that going on. Now these spots here can be interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about the Omenhawk block onto the Saga Seeker. Like traditionally, this would just be fucking terrible, right? But with the way these things sequence, this guy ends up being a four four like a lot of the time. Like we see now, he's a four four, and we can't just make this attack any now. But if we get the point of damage on it with the Omen Hawk, and then we assume he's going to be a four health, uh, we can come in and start doing things. And so, I don't know. Uh, it, it's kind of awkward. I don't think he understands how this works. Maybe he just wants the faded to go along with it. But now here, you know, this is the the perk to. Uh, Having not blocked earlier was we get to prevent a big chunk of damage. Alright. Well, this hand is awkward. Drew too much too much top end here. This is why I took one of the Alpha Wild Claws out. This was happening a little too frequently. But we'll get to we'll get to see how this goes at least. We got this uh the boosted papercraft dragon, right? We got the plus three plus three bonus onto him today. So might be able to get some usage out of it. I'm pretty tempted to just go ahead and drop it onto this ruthless raider. Uh I think this is where we need to be. And I'm envisioning some kind of, like, entomb play a few turns from now. Still got three mana. That's a little scary, not big scary. We can try and troll chant out of this. It's like we have two two options, right? We can try and troll chant down the dragon, uh, which seems safer, right? He's already played uh, the faded onto it this turn. He's likely... There is the new combat trick now that gives... From Bandal City that gives plus two, plus one to two units. So at most... We're going to have to deal with six. I think this is fine. Let's go ahead and troll chant. Uh, give you a bonus. You a neg. Let's see where that lands. Because we don't need to, like, end the game. Oh, fuck. Hush is a problem. We still get our... Uh, oh, that, oh, that's not a problem. That's pretty choice, actually. <laughs> that's pretty choice. We can't unattach the thing until this unit dies, but uh, can, can uh, does feel a little bit stronger. All right, I think this is probably safer, right? If we uh, just uh, frostbite this dumb dumb before we blast it. Now we should have a fairly safe attack like this. Do we ever lethal here? Uh, no, we can't lethal here. If we wanted to say, hook, put the Saga Seeker in front of Sejuani and then try and blast through with uh, the Ruthless Raider. Okay. More Pale Cascades. You gotta get up to 12 or we're gonna kill your dude. I guess this does prevent a bunch of damage for him, but he's put, like, so much work into this board. And we get our, our Papercraft Dragon back. Pretty nice. See, these are these spots that you can get yourself into with the dragon. It's like, you know, if, if we have the Entomb to just take his unit away, it, it gets us just, like, super close to lethal. But I, I think we're ready to just switch to playing around Nar. No, opponent gives up. <laughs> we haven't, we haven't actually uh, gotten to deal lethal to an opponent yet. Everybody just concedes. Feels good, man. Feels good. <sighs> Good. 
get up out of these golds. <laughs> the the highest I've ever climbed in uh, Endering Terror was Diamond. It's like I, when, when I first started playing, like back right after the beta, uh, I had like the intent that I had with the channel was I was just going to like free to play climb uh, to Masters and then see what we could do in Masters is kind of like a free to play thing. Because there's always people that are just like better than me. There's always people that. Uh, we're on the evens. Let's hang on to Nar. There's there's always people that are you know, uh, like serious tournament grinders and everything. But uh, you got to kind of like find your niche, and I thought that would be kind of fun. And then I did. I didn't know at the time it was going to be uh, so so free to play friendly that uh, it, it wasn't like super relevant to come out here and actually try and piece that kind of thing together. And then I just immediately started playing Expedition right after that. <laughs> so it, it's kind of odd. Uh, how that all played out um, and then I have I just haven't tried to do any kind of ladder grinding since I, I've had like some some moments in time where I was like ah maybe I'll try to do it and then like I would get like 30 or 40 games into it just like nah I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that anymore uh, so we'll, we'll get up there here pretty uh, pretty reasonably quickly especially if this deck keeps doing its thing and having reasonable success with this guy I was hoping this would kind of play out to where if we needed to get the tick this turn, we could do it. Uh, and so I didn't want to block the Otterpus last turn in case this was going to be something to where, like, he, he has to put a block and a combat trick in front of our uh, Ruthless Raider. It didn't, didn't play out like that, but I think this is still okay. I have to take the Caitlyn hit. Not a big deal. We'll be battling with old Nar after this. kind of fucked up dude <laughs> that's kind of fucked up playing three fives nobody approves of that so how do we feel about this i i i feel better like next turn when we're able to say like sejuani onto the lecturing yordle and then just take away his good blocks i i think here uh, i'm looking to just um uh, plus three, plus four, Nar, and then block Caitlyn. See, I think plus three, plus four is probably safer than the than the flash freeze. It is one more mana expensive though. Um, so if we hmm, maybe we do go for the flash freeze. So if we want a pokey stick next turn, we can still do it. Or if we want a pokey stick this turn and flip Nar. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for the Flash Freeze. It's Flash Freeze Caitlyn, but then I'm just going to block with our 4-2 instead of blocking with Gnar. If something goes wrong, I'd rather it go wrong on the Ruthless Raider. Excellent. And he plays another unit, so we get the the Nar vulnerable, so we can kind of like pick and choose what we want to hook out here, and then we have the Sejuani vulnerable to hit the other one. I think Nar goes onto the the lecturing Yordle. This should be the strongest one. Yeah. All right. Any of you Sejuani got the boosts? Nope. Okay. Hi, Broheim. Here comes the team. Care about this? Probably not. <laughs> I gotta read this guy. Hang on. When I'm summoned or round in, okay, put three puff caps on random cards. Traps on enemy cards are doubled when activated. You're a little scary. We're a little bit low, but dude's out of... Uh, uh, out of mana at this point, so this attack has to be pretty safe. Then he's got to kill us ASAP. Got to get in here stat, bruh. What are we at? Do we got to squeeze in butt cheeks yet? They only got nine puff caps at this point. Now we're up to 12. Feel somewhat safe. Okay. 
<laughs> a lot of a lot of flashies just hit the screen. I had to had to stop and analyze. I think that turned out okay. He plays Caitlyn. Uh, it, it's tempting to try and keep some Fury of the North mana, but I don't know if he ever come like comes through with it. I think the thing here though is he's not going to have uh, the mana next turn. We're not going to have the mana next turn to like play a unit and a Wild Claw. So it's at least or play like a Wild Claw and a spell. So I want, let's just go ahead and play the Omen Hawk. So if we want to block Caitlyn, we at least have a, a fairly safe Dum Dum to do so with. But now he's out of mana, so he's he's just never attacking. All right, so where do we stand? If we attack with everything, he's going to block Nar, right? So he blocks Nar with the Puffcat Peddler because that prevents four. And then he has seven health to put in front of the rest of our stuff. So Wild Claw comes through for one. Sejuani takes it up to six. Ruthless Raider takes it up to ten. And then Fury of the North should get us a kill. Okay. He can have some weird shit here. He can have... Uh, uh, like stress defense, but I usually don't worry about that out of like these puff cap decks. Uh, if he had played a conchologist, it might uh, it might be kind of a, a worthwhile place to consider uh, worrying about it. But I don't think that's where we're at. Takes him to neg one. Boom. Congrats, team. We did it. Oh, man, I was speaking of the gym. That's what reminded me. I've been forgetting to update the uh, the, the New Year's weight loss tracker thing. We're, we're still going strong. I had a, a kind of a slow week with that. Uh, ended up doing like a, a Valentine's Day thing. Uh, and then we weren't happy with it, so we did another Valentine's Day thing, and then the, the Super Bowl was in there, so that all involved a lot of uh, a lot of eating way too much, but uh, kind of back on track now, and we're still doing good in those terms. Like, what is it at? We're 53 days in. Uh, most of the experts kind of recommend trying to do like a pound a week, and so uh, we're a little bit over that, uh, and so feeling okay in those terms. So, I mean, if you're still out there working on it, we're working on it too. You want to start now on day 53? You're more than welcome. <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on here. I've seen like handfuls of people playing things like Inventive Chemist. You know, it does a pretty good job of uh, bringing the booms onto our board, help you level up these Sejuanis much quicker. I, I just feel like it's a little underpowered. And so uh, I'm not like usually amped about that. Coming out of this and let's take Bouncing Bomb. Looks like it has a lot of potential to, to clean up some of his smaller plays. Ooh, Conchologist, cool. I was like, I, I was wanting to, to make an attack in here because of Troll Chant, but uh, that, that was a perfect draw. It's a little cleaner than playing the Ice Veil Archer. Now, coming out of these, I I do like the ideal of, of Prowling Projectile, but we just picked up the Bouncing Bomb to do some of these kind of like cleanup works. Uh, and so I think think like the brittle steel is going to start failing here soon it's like the kind of nice thing with brittle steel is it can hit nar uh, but then as like opponent improves to playing like sejuanis and, and uh, alpha wild claws it doesn't do anything whereas it can protect our with well, elixir can pre protect our uh, big boys as the time comes so i think i want to take the elixir i'm curious here if we run our troll chant into his troll chant and everything just bounces off of each other but we seem to be like <clears throat> building up ahead of them, even if uh, Troll Chant is the case. Maybe murder was the case, right? <laughs> Get some of that Nandi's rap. I I saw like the the most appropriate meme in regards to the Super Bowl the other day. With, uh, it, it was basically people people under age thirty. Uh, didn't recognize anyone in the Super Bowl the halftime show. Then everyone over 50 uh, <laughs> said, what's the deal with this shitty music at the halftime Super Bowl? And then everyone between 30 and 50 was just super enjoying it and loving it as the best halftime show ever. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, 
uh, I wasn't like the hugest fan of the 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 choice of Kendrick Lamar songs, uh, but everything else I thought was pretty choice. Out there worrying about Fifty Cent, uh, <laughs> getting stuck doing the uh, the inverted sit up things and everything. I, I thought it was uh, it, it was pretty choice, but I, I kind of loved the, uh, the 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 idea of people not understanding there. But murder was the case. Or murder was the case they gave me it was a, a, a classic Snoop Dogg song. Covering the, the trials and tribulations of being Snoop and this murder trial. Ice Shard, you got it. That's another one of those cards I feel like, you know, we technically could play, but it just feels like so super all in. Like, I, I feel like if you're playing, like, uh, Gangplank or something, like if you're playing Gangplank Sejuani, then it might make a little bit more sense to play cards like that. I just don't think it makes, like, tons of sense to play here. Let's just shut this down. We're about to overbank. Uh, I don't care to, like, trade next turn, but let's at least shut this attack down now. We get to bank a little bit here uh, and see what uh, see what turns up. It's still fairly awkward. All right, ready for battle. How close are we to flipping Sejuani? Oh God, one. <laughs> we're, we're one tick on Sejuani. That's that's never happening this game. I, I thought we were about to get close here, and that was just one hundred percent false. Ice shard, kind of painful. Pokey stick, and, but then he no blocks us. <sighs> that's pretty good, my dude. I wasn't really expecting another AOE to come out of this guy. Damn. I wonder, were either of those generated by Conchologists? I, I didn't highlight it to see. That would have been kind of interesting. Oh man, his Sejuani slipped. He's been covering a pretty similar strategy and just doing it way better than us. Alright. And ultimately, like, my worry here is we do have this, uh... Oh, this is, this is just so bad. We do have this mini morph to, to try and shut down his Sejuani, but he can still get her to, like, flip. I don't I don't think we can recover out of this. Oh, yeah, we're done. We're done. He's got that, he's got that full combo on the board. Combo breaking our win streak, dude. Not cool. Not cool. <laughs> But yeah, I'm not like uh, I. I feel like you know his strategy worked. I, I completely understand playing cards like Inventive Chemist and Ice Shard. Uh, I, I feel like they're well. There's two things to that. I feel like if you don't draw your champions and it's not nearly as good, uh, right? You, you're like heavily investing in the activators, and then to have uh, some of the activators not come together is a bit problematic. And then. Um, uh, it's just like a lot of those cards don't feel like they're playing to the theme, but he is playing all of the impact style um, cards, and so perhaps that works out more nicely than him for him. Uh, coming in here, I I think we can hang on to the Nar. Uh, the, we're playing against Formidable, and this is one of these places where I'm really looking to pick up the uh, the Rhymefang Wolf because uh, this is uh, a not good matchup. I, I think kind of the way this goes is we have to just be like willing to, to slam our dudes into not good attacks and kind of accept that we'll probably not win. Um, so it, it's like if they play the 0-3 formidable challenger here, like how do we feel about it? Uh, not not great, you know? <laughs> not great, but I, I still haven't fully decided how I want to approach this match other than the Rhymefang Wolves. See, because now we have cards like Troll Chant. Turns out playing Troll Chant on a bunch of uh, zero health units isn't the most ideal thing uh, that you could be doing. <laughs> so, not the most ideal. Alright, here with this sequence, we do miss out on our mana for Troll Chant. 
I think that's okay. I'm ready to just kind of go into race mode here. And so I'm just going to open next turn and not look to be dropping Gnar. He blocks big. We could potentially pokey stick this thing down, but I'm just like not super interested in it. I guess like the flip side of this is if we want to uh, go into our next attack and have uh, like the, the papercraft dragon, I guess that works out okay. We'd have to just choose to not play Gnar here. And maybe keeping our width is the way to go about this. We get to, like, chunk some damage onto this dum-dum. I mean, realistically, this is the best troll chant we're ever going to get. So yeah, let's go for it. Even if he plays, like, a Pale Cascade now, we survive that. sharp sights that take him up to lethal does okay picking up friendship is kind of interesting it lets us like roll into next turn um, it, it's like the the way this can go poorly is if like we get invested in this uh, this papercraft dragon and have things just kind of go wrong, right? We we get annihilated by a single combat here if we say put the the papercraft dragon onto the test speaker. I mean maybe that's okay if his play is single combat. Oh man, it's just like. I want to get, like, Gnar down, but we run into the, the problem of next turn as to where Gnar is not going to be on overwhelm mode. Like, I guess we can say play Gnar and then Pokey Stick and then next turn try to load up the, the Tusk Speaker, but that feels kind of dangerous. feel a lot better now that uh, he didn't have, a, didn't have a removal. So we have the barrier to protect our Tusk Speaker, and then we can chunk in two bonus damage with... Uh, uh, with the pokey stick if we want. Hmm. I, I just don't think it's like ultra common that we, we get a kill through this tusk speaker. <sighs> but let's see. Right? I mean, he has if he, he has to like block it with one of these uh, three health dum-dums. All right. So he still keeps his quick attack and everything, but he lost out on his overwhelm. Uh, then the Siobhan is going to flip. We're just a little bit too far behind now. Let's see. He has to block. If he wants to kill it, he can use his Wounded White Flame and we can barrier through it. Not really amped about that. I feel like he's probably just going to block with his Blinded Mystic. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're not completely dead here. Good pokey stick, grow a little bit, drop an omen hawk, so we have a dude on board. Get the rhyme fang wolf. <laughs> this is definitely not the formidable start I was expecting. Uh... All right, I, I feel like a little better given that uh... Uh, given that we didn't. Uh... Uh, find ourselves on a board to where he's just like open lethaling us. Uh, I, I think in this kind of space we need to like kill off our tusk speaker so that we can attach that uh, attach that item to it. But he can't lethal us here, right? I'm not mistaken in how some of these dumb cards work. <laughs> okay, let's pass. I wonder if he just passes it back to us at this point. Can't imagine. That seems fairly horrible for him. Like, it's very risky to let us keep these kind of double strikey cards around. We can technically lethal with Gnar. No, we can't. And say so we, we have, like, the Entomb style play that we could line up. Just curious if this was too greedy to not, like, drop the Rhymefang Wolf. Like, <laughs> you're, you're obviously up to shenanigans when you pass like this, but... 
Probably should have added the wolf. Alright, so where do we find ourselves here? I guess this a lot of this will just come down to like what he blocks Gnar with. Hope this guy had vulnerable. Maybe could have done something there, but... And we can like we can entomb the big dragon, but then we we like we just fall one short, which is a little unfortunate. All right, we kill the Galio. Does he get a rally out of this? Why does he get the rally? The first time an ally takes damage, I guess him being the ally is what makes that happen. So we'll chunk in for six. This uh, Petrocyte Broadwing only deals one damage back, so our, our, our speaker is not going to die. Uh, and then uh, it's like I, I'm just trying to envision how we get a pokey stick, right? <laughs> if we can play, if we can play the Tusk speaker and uh, deal a point of damage, we just need the pokey stick at this point, uh, and we could potentially get a kill. Uh, the Meganar will flip back to Regnar form next turn. So maybe that'll be a thing. Sure. So he has one mana left. I don't think there's anything we need to worry about here. We're just going to slam a bunch of damage onto each other. For one mana, he can't give this. They don't play Radiant Strikes, right? I think that's safe. All right, let's see if we get boomed here. All right, we're so close. We're right there. <laughs> we we have an angle to, to try and pull this one out with now. We just gotta we gotta get our pokey stick out of the nar. Galio, is that bad? And how how clever can we be here? I mean, we still have four blockers for his dudes, and so it's like I just don't want to drop the pokey. I don't want to drop the tusk speaker before we kind of ad and advertise that we have uh, this potential here. But I think we can papercraft dragon. If we boom that one onto Nar. We still have blockers for oh how bad is this? This thing has overwhelm. Oh I missed I missed out on these guys having overwhelm. Could we have done this if we played the Wild Claw? Shit. Does everything have what does Shivana have it? Oh the crushed egg gives out overwhelm. Okay. Okay. That's what it is. We we found an angle there. We just didn't weren't able to execute on it. Hmm. Dang. I I, f I feel like if we got to redo that, we might have might have been able to win that one. That's okay. On to the next one. We'll learn our lesson and move forward. That was quite awkward though. I was expecting that to be. Uh, it, it was like we were playing against Taric Pantheon, but they or. or um, Shivana Pantheon, except they just took the good cards out for bad cards. <laughs> that uh, that Galio did a little, literally, literally nothing. This is the kind of Galio I was more along the lines of expecting, and uh, where I'm hoping these Rhymefang wolves can uh, uh, show off their thunder. Again, this is like a, a decent looking start, but the troll chants are so bad.
We're on opponent's token, so let's drop the Tusk Speaker. Uh, go ahead and make that Sejuani tick happen on their turn. Hopefully we can punch in a bit on our turn. It's odd seeing them open. They usually have that Challenger unit. It's nothing. Okay. What do we got? I do like this Manifest of Fey and grant it 1-1. I don't think we're really interested in any of these other two. I think they usually have one of these weird tricks here. That's not the one I was expecting. <laughs> womp womp. I wonder if he just like clicked the wrong one or what happened there. If he expected that heal to give him bonus health. Interesting. Well, I feel a little better about this stuff now. All right, so how are we handling this? The intent was to still get, like, a block onto the Soraka. But, I mean, we're just going to lose Nar. There's there's no two ways around that. This Nar's done for. So let's at least troll chant onto our other things. So the, it's like the, the kind of downside to this is we need to deal with this Soraka before it attacks next turn. If we want to keep this uh, this Petrocyte Broadwing weakened. And it's pretty tough to pull that off. We've picked up Pokey Sticks now. Okay. This is a good Ancient Yeti. We can try and Pokey Stick one of these things. It's usually uh, pretty dangerous to, to try and pull off. But we'll see what their heals look like. I assume he just, like, never blocks with Soraka. May put the... Like, if we can get the Broadwing to block something, that's pretty good. But when he adds the uh, the Duran Sculptor to this board, I'm curious if he's just, like, out of tricks. Uh, it's an odd play here when it doesn't really do anything. Okay, let's make him play something now. I don't think we're at like real risk of dying here, but oh, that makes that makes me feel so much better about uh, how this game's going. Sure. He passes. I mean, we do have the Sejuani in hand, but all right. Really close to lethal here with our 10 Overwhelm on board. We we have uh, another Pokey Stick. Three Sisters won't get Fury of the North. We don't have the mana for that, but... How bad is that? Galio is not quite to where he can kill our dudes. He has three mana for shenanigans here. <laughs> A fair amount of shenanigan mana. He's going to heal and take down our Sejuani. I think that's fine, as long as we can take down the Soraka uh, as we do it. Can't interact with his uh, spell shield anyways. So we have lost all of our width, which kind of sucks, but we're at least kind of far away from dying, it feels like. Needs more heals for this Galio. He's only dealing six damage here. Make that plus eight. <laughs> only dealing 14 damage here. So we probably need to go ahead and mini morph Galio. Uh, so that would be like. 
Let's see. Flash Freeze would be the cheaper way to go about this. Okay. Taking five is much more reasonable. It says, what up, Mini T? All right, play the control game here. Trixie Tentacles is <laughs> is moderately interesting given this board. You have to kind of like assume that their hand is just full of expensive stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say like, if we get the chance to come out here and like pop Galio, that that's actually uh, pretty nice. It's hoping for something to give us a little bit more targeting since we have the mini morph. We're not gonna be able to stop this flip. So but let's take the three sisters. Deal with him next turn. We can at least mini morph him before damage is dealt, right? So that's not nearly as scary. Right, so he won't get the rally. Get him, Trixie Tentacles. This is gonna be this is gonna be choice, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this is gonna be choice. I can tell. He's playing cards and stuff now. Oh man, boom him! I didn't see what that was. Oh, that was the uh, the 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 single combat kind of card. Okay. So his Galio flips right, but we can. He he's only gonna have one card at this point. We have a million in our hand, even though most of them aren't that good, and we're going to have to spend two, like three, I guess, in total on Galio. Hit <laughs> the Rhyme Fang Wolf. Oh, snap. He's ready to do his thing. So let's see. we got to start out this way. Uh, flash Freeze. On to Galio. Many more. To Galio. Okay, that's been done. Now, in terms of the rest of these, I think we want to take six. From this Petrocyte Hound, hopefully we can just deal with it with the Rhymefang Wolf. Uh, and then we probably just need to block these other two. We're going to be real. Uh, just, to, just to ensure we can buy ourselves some time. Okay, okay. Are things turning around? Maybe. Who we got? Any of you good? Papercraft Dragon? You just end the game? We, we, we can't quite get there. How big was our... Are you a 7? I can't see our Alpha Wild Claw. He shouldn't be a 7. I was curious if we would be able to... Um... Oh, he is a 7. We wouldn't have had the mana to Entomb, though. Glad we got those basic mathematics out of the way, though. He does seven attack, opponent has seven health. <laughs> if we can hit for that much, then we'll win the game. You learned it here first on the FTP bus channel. <laughs> All right. Hush, that's not cool. At least chunks down his health quite a bit. All right, I'm feeling much better now, though. It, it, we just need to, like, survive this one turn, and we can come in with the big papercraft dragon booming and, and uh, win the game. <sighs> so, do we just pass? He's got six on board. We can block. Yeah, we can pass. We still have those three sisters if we need to do something here. Takes us to one. Should be safe. We can troll chant out of this if we need to, but... Uh, Oh no, we okay, okay, we can we can troll chant the sculptor down here. Jesus, that was uh, perhaps a little too dangerous. All right, I think we win now though. Oh, it wasn't. We still had the three sisters in hand. We could have entombed the the hound if we needed to. Okay. Give me a give me a hot minute to get used to these new cards and, <laughs> and we'll be fine. Oh, uh, we got an emote on this one. Choice. Choice kitty cat. Boom, get them OTKs. Ah, oh, feels good. Feels good. 
<laughs> Neg 11, the game says. Nah, man. Nah, I'm gonna play my cards if you're playing your cards. Nah, get that out of here. <laughs> nice. That was a fun one. That was good. All right, let's get uh, let's get two more going in here, and then we'll we'll call it a day. I feel like that's probably a, a enough bust for you all to, to handle. Man, that reminds me. I was I was watching the uh, I watched the movie The High Note the other day. It ties into all that Snoop Dogg work and everything. It had our boy Ice Cube in it. Uh, you know, classic uh, '90s rapper turned uh, children's movie maker. Good on you, my dude. Make that money. But uh, is this another Galio? So we can hang on to the Rhymefang Wolf and really give it a try. I, I was expecting these Rhymefang Wolves to survive all these combats. I don't think I like this as much as I thought I was going to, right? Everything just has formidable, so these are just going to die anyways. It is nice that they can, like, take them down, but it's certainly not as good as I was expecting it to be. Let's just keep all of this, though. Like, as they go, like, it is nice to be able to, like, take down Galio with this thing, though. But my information on him wasn't as, uh, as premier as I would have... Uh, like to have given you. But no, Ice Cube, he was in the high note. He was fine. It reminded me of, like, two things with old Ice Cube. Uh, when I was uh, uh, just just starting out uh, in the professional work, uh, I uh, I would get, like, pissed off at work. <laughs> and then uh, kind of, like, my solution for that was uh, to listen to Ice Cube. Uh, he has a, a classic album named The Predator, uh, and I think we can safely play Rhymefang Wolf here and just kind of see what happens. I'm not planning on attacking with it, but it, it should give our opponent some pause. Maybe we do hook the Yordle Smith, though. Kind of like the hook, hooking here, playing the Alcat next turn, and then... That didn't work out as, uh, as much as I had hoped, but I think this is okay. Let's, let's do hit with Homan Hawk, so if he wants to hook our protege next turn, we have a kill on it. But no, like, whenever I get pissed off at work, I would listen to Ice Cube's uh, The Predator. It's a fantastic album. Uh, kind of, like, my viewpoint on it was uh, as, as you know, uh, I'm trying to envision how uh, terrible and hard my life is. Uh, Ice Cube has had it way harder. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you, you lose kind of, like, a, a lot of things to bitch about as you listen to Ice Cube since he just had it, you know, way worse than you ever did. And, uh, that, that was kind of like my thinking, but then that would just like make me more and more upset <laughs> as, as the time went on that, uh, I, I had to kind of like give up on, on listening to Ice Cube because I found myself just getting more mad. Uh, <laughs> and so that's kind of what transitioned to me into listening to a lot of, I, I just call it girl singing pop songs. And so it's got a lot, a lot of Taylor Swift to it and, and a lot of things like that. Uh, because the ice cube was a little, a little too much, uh, on my, how bad is this going to be stress defense? I don't remember how this works. I was like, I don't think this works as positively as opponent wants, but, uh, probably not horrible for them. But no, <laughs> it's like that's that's what I think of when I see Ice Cube now. Is uh, is my uh, gotta 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 feel better about life. Let's turn on some Ice Cube. But all right, back to this. I'm getting a little distracted. How are we gonna handle this? Uh, like, uh, I'm tempted to like throw a Sejuani onto the Fleet Feather Tracker, but it, it just kind of feels like we should be going wide here and playing Sejuani next turn. Uh, so I'm gonna start adding these Tusk Speakers kind of see what happens if we lose the the papercraft thing or i'm sorry if we lose the ruthless raider we get the papercraft thing back and we can be ready to double strike again next turn with all of our overwhelms i, I think this will turn out okay but at the end of the turn like the boards are empty i think this is good as well right we've played the tusk speaker which will in turn um this doesn't kill our ruthless raider which will in turn flip our gnar for next turn he's got the stress defense okay he is in huge on this thing. Okay. It still feels pretty positive. It's like you, you get so much value out of these papercraft dragons and being able to reuse it. Uh, that was a humongous investment for him. And the, the typical standbys, right? Like many more stress defense, uh, silences and stuff, they just don't uh, completely do 
uh, what you know opponents need them to do against this thing. Alright, let's add Tusk Speaker because we can. Uh, I, I can put the dragon onto Tusk Speaker and then attempt to take down the Broadwing. Um, Galio makes that slightly awkward. Okay. Oh, he's out of mana. And so, uh, th this is still good. We're going to chunk in for nine, and he's just got this naked Galio out here. I, I think we're looking pretty good now. Do kind of need to deal a point of damage to him <laughs> if we want to get our, uh, get our Nar to flip. But... Let's wait and see. This is a fantastic place for Omen Hawk just to block the Galio with incoming Poppy. It's like I, I kind of want to add the Sejuani, but these these vulnerables aren't that big of a deal. Downside here is we can't play all of these cards next turn. Okay, let's just go with the Sejuani. We'll weaken up the, the bird. He can still get plus one attack on the bird via Poppy, but it seems like a pretty terrible attack there. Okay, man, I forget what my other Ice Cube anecdote was. I, I, I remembered girls singing pop songs. That was, like, always the big one for me. <laughs> Listening to the Predator just getting more fucking mad and seething, and <laughs> as, you, as you kick on that Taylor Swift, you just feel better. Man, I thought I had another Ice Cube-related anecdote. Oh, I remember what it was. Um... Uh, uh, and uh, back when I was I was grinding the uh, the Magic Grand Prix circuit, we we went and played in a Grand Prix in Atlanta. And if you're not familiar uh, with, with movie making in the United States, uh, of course everyone is well aware of of Los Angeles. That's where the core of movies are made. But there has been this like gigantic push. Uh, to to make movies in Atlanta, and there's just a, a super strong possibility that. Uh, whatever TV show you're watching these days or whatever movie you're watching uh, was made in Atlanta as opposed to being made in Los Angeles. Uh, and so uh, with that kind of background, we were at uh, a Grand Prix in Atlanta. It must have been like, I don't know, like 2015 to 2018 or so. Uh, and it's like we get to the hotel and there's these signs up for uh, like just a prom. And it's like, well, this is kind of weird because it seems like everyone is is much older than you would expect for a prom. It's like you walk by the ballroom and it's just like a bunch of fucking adults like <laughs> standing there holding beers uh, at this prom. And you're like, well, that's that's kind of strange. Let's see what's happening. And so it's like uh, we went and like go inside and there's no like teenagers or children or whatever you would expect at prom. And uh like we ask them, they're like, "What's going on?" And they're like, "Oh, well, this is the rap party for the movie Fist Fight." And we're like, "Oh, okay." And they're like, "Do you, you can just drink beers and stuff if you want. It's all paid for." And <laughs> we're like, "Oh, okay." And so, uh, if you're not familiar with the movie Fist Fight, it was okay. Uh, it was, but it, it starred uh, Ice Cube and then Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny. Uh, and kind of the premise of the movie is they're both teachers or Ice Cube might have been a principal or something and uh, him and Charlie Day get into a, a bit of a scuffle and the they determine that they're going to have a fist fight at the end of the day at school uh, and that's the, the kind of premise of the movie but that, that was the other thing that happened to me in life <laughs> in terms of Ice Cube Ice Cube wasn't there, Charlie Day wasn't there it was just like uh, I, I think some of the actors that I wouldn't remember still were there but um, uh, you didn't, didn't get to hang out with any of the big ones. And I'm too socially awkward to go talk to them anyways, so <laughs> that that wouldn't have been happening. Uh, but yeah, Ice Cube, thanks for, thanks for the beers at the rap party. We appreciate that. <laughs> but alrighty, so what are we going to do here? Still against Yumi Nar. I, I lost my, my mind a little bit here. We can add Nar and try and pick up Pokey Stick. I, I, I'm curious, like, the level of times that's ever works. So let's, it just feels so much safer to add Conchologists here. Uh, stress Defense is probably the place we want to be. Over the Trixie Tentacles, the dude has a million cards in his hand. And then 
now the new question is, are we running into troll chant? Uh, and so that, that's like extremely common and we're like definitely taking damage this turn. So let's just block one so we don't get completely blown out by troll chant if that's a thing. I think we can go ahead and play Tusk Speaker. Uh, get that Sejuani tick up. And then we can just deal damage next turn if we want to get Nar on board. So many Ice Cube anecdotes. Y'all didn't think FTP bus had it in it. <laughs> like, uh, this, this, white, this white boy with the hick-ass accent out here talking about Ice Cube. <laughs> all right, all right. Back to the action. Uh, I think Nar is ready for battle now. We should have a pretty safe attack here with the with the stress defense in hand. But I don't think there's like too many tricks to worry about, right? I think they probably play as the similar like wheelhouse of tricks we're playing, uh, and we shouldn't have to worry about too much at three mana other uh, than troll chant. So he can still have a decent troll chant here, but I don't suspect we're going to lose our Nar if he has one. He's definitely, he's definitely got something. Okay, well, we want our Nar to, uh, uh, to to get the strike in, so we'll play the stress defense on ours. It does open our Nar to getting popped by a pokey stick, but uh, he should flip next turn and go up to two health uh, and, and be a little bit safe in those terms. Oh, I stayed at two health. Okay. comes at us, we're good with the mini morph. We're off on a new hmm. I don't think I really want to deal with that. Like, we can block it with Conchologists, and I, I think that leaves me happy enough. Heycart has a lot of uh, interesting applications here into boosting our NAR. I think I like it. Do we ever just take this? Like, how close do we get next turn, right? So say we play... Uh, we, we play the, the Rhymefang Wolf. Uh, then we can get in for 6, 8, 11, and then try and pokey stick him. Let's just take it. Right, this is actually 9. We can hook the Gnar with Conchologist if we want to. Right, he's going to have Vulnerable. opponent did just come at us with a flash freeze and so it's not uh, you know, ultra likely that we're going to get a uh, get a kill here a lot of interactive possibilities that he has but let's give it a shot ice spell arch is pretty interesting now <laughs> we had just like actually having this oh no 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 he's got oh it does frostbite through the yumi Interesting. I, I thought the Yumi points were going to stay on him. Where does that get us? To zero? Okay. I still worry about this being a flash freeze, right? Or, uh, I don't think we ever see like harsh winds or, or, or something like that, but I, I think we're pretty likely to get flash frozen here. But uh, the, the should at least hopefully be one of these spaces as to where he has to make the decision at, at uh, can I win this game without Nar? And do I need to invest my spells into Nar? Um, you know, uh, or just never being able to win the game. And so it's like he knows we have a pokey stick, so we can get in for like one point of damage, but. Um, Right, this is a pretty tough comeback place for him if he doesn't have this Gnar at the end of the turn. And so it's like definitely real chance he sends stuff to the right. Okay. Game says lethal. 
No. <laughs> okay. It's not the end of the world, right? We can still uh, like mini morph his Nar next turn, and our Mar our Nar is going to be pretty big. But man, feels so much better just to get a lethal. <laughs> Three sisters is big as well. Okay. And then uh, uh, the the big thing here was to like stop and assess our mana. If we want to go ahead and drop Ancient Yeti, uh, we should fairly safely be able to do so. But if we want to say like Mini Morph plus uh, like a Flash Freeze, that doesn't seem as good. We should only really need like one one of these cards this turn. Got two cards left. Papercraft Dragon is moderately annoying, but what are you bringing in? He's going to kill our Nar. That's at least good to know uh, in, in terms of if we're going to die or not. Yeah, so we have to, we have to play cards onto the, uh, the onto the Yeti. Okay, we can still beat this. Oh no! Oh no! It's that, it's that stupid a thing. Shit! 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 Shit, shit. I thought we were going to put damage onto this. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> I talked all about the... Uh... Oh, is this card Pokey Stick? It's not visible. Shit. Oh, we punted this one. We, we should have three sisters into Flash Freeze and taken him down. Fuck. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's not good. We probably just died a Pokey Stick now. And we're short on the the ancient yeti damage. We, I, I was envisioning needing to uh, entomb next turn, and, and trying to get a win that way. With ten mana, can we do both things? No. Shit. We dead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was bad. That was bad. I guess. Uh, did we... Well, we lost out on having the unit on board was the problem there. Okay. Anyways, that was a fun set. Let me take a moment. We'll get this pulled up and, and talk about it a, a little bit more in terms of the, the changes and the like. All right. Well, I can't get Mobilitics to update to see what our final win rate was there, but uh, it seems like we started out like 4-0 and oh and then probably finished off like 7-4 and four or so, 7-3, 8-4. and four. I don't know. I don't know how many games we played, but, uh, you know, pretty reasonable. Uh, and then we also saw a handful of other people playing this style of deck as well. And so uh, it wouldn't surprise me uh, if this turns out to be one of the, the more popular archetypes turning up. Uh, and so uh, I think probably the big takeaway that would get out of this, though, is we're, we're going to be running into Papercraft Dragons. Uh, I, I don't... Uh, completely know uh, how I feel about this in terms of uh, how fun and balanced it's going to be out there. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it is a, a pretty like high risk, high reward card though, right? Investing five mana in a unit, there's not tons of good ways to just deal with it. Uh, maybe this is one of the spaces as to where uh, we we just see cards like uh, Homecoming become much better. Uh, I, I don't <clears throat> I don't know though. It, it doesn't feel like a big. Uh, like meta destroyer, but there's there's definitely some raw power there, and being able to spread uh, double uh, double strike onto stuff is, is pretty interesting, and so uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this turn up, and then it kind of expands out into, well, how do I put this on an elusive, or how do I put this on an overwhelm, or maybe even to a lesser degree, how do I put this on a strike unit? Uh, and the strike units seem kind of like the worst of the bunch, but you know if you're able to um, uh, to to get this onto something that that can you know just insta kill your opponent, that's uh, something you definitely have to uh, keep in mind. And so 
you know, he's pretty reasonably powerful. Do I think the Bandle City is, is worth it in these kind of Sejuani overwhelm decks? Uh, maybe again, you know that kind of depends on the uh, on how the format shakes out and the the various uh, top archetypes and stuff. I uh, the the thing that really surprises me with this these days is we haven't just been running into a shitload of elusives. Uh, you know the 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 kind of quickest way to climb is always with the aggro decks, and it's very easy to climb early on as people are trying to. Uh, optimize their decks uh, and uh, if your goal is to just hit masters as quickly as possible it is a pretty good time to just uh, come out here and run around with the elusives and I don't know how this will shape play as you know the meta shakes up uh, our <laughs> our experiment with Rhymefang Wolf was kind of a learning experience it does uh, come out and kill the likes of Galio but it does die in response I had it in my head that we were just going to come out here and uh, annihilate all these formidable decks as the Rhymefang Wolf just you know killed the zero attack unit and didn't die in the process it, it kind of slipped me that uh he in fact does die in the process, but it, it, it can be reasonable in terms of those tend to be fairly go tall decks. And if you get to you know kill a Galio with Ryan Fang Wolf, it's a good deal. If they have a, a singular formidable unit that they've cast like an Astral Protection, and then another whatever the you know gain two this turn, gain three next turn kind of thing. If they've invested two and three and four cards into their a singular formidable unit, then it is nice to be able to just kill that with three mana. And so uh, would would we play a spell that says, uh, you know, kill a unit with zero health for, for three mana? Uh, you know, probably it wouldn't be main deckable for sure, but uh, uh, the, the price is kind of right for what I would pay against a lot of that stuff. And then this just has a lot of other uh, interactiveness, which isn't terrible. And so it is off theme. Uh, and you know, that Galio matchup is fairly terrible. And so I'm, I'm just kind of leaning more towards, uh, just, just say fuck formidable <laughs> and don't worry about it. And so you, you can't do that as easily and just kind of the ladder grind. But if you are uh, playing in a tournament or if you're playing in the gauntlet, uh, and you can ban out the formidable decks, the, then that is, you know, a perk to adding this overwhelm style thing uh, to, to your lineup. And if this turns out to be a fairly successful deck, then, then uh, you can just kind of set these lineups as to where you're just playing the same deck over and over again. Maybe uh, you, you just have to kind of like swap around the champions. And so has lots of uh, interesting applications there as well. But uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. I'm always up for playing Conchologists. Uh, Nar, I, I do believe to be the, the strongest champion out of the new expansion. Uh, I, I think he's uh, far and away, re you know, really powerful. He, he seems uh, powerful enough to be interesting, but not powerful enough to nerf. And so uh, I don't think he'll he'll catch any nerfs unless uh, the, the Nar decks are just way too common and... Uh, I don't see this as being something that's ultra powerful like an Ari Kennan is, and so he's probably pretty safe here for the future. Uh, but otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Again, the things I'm kind of flexible on, uh, we can remove the Rhymefang Wolf, do as you will. Uh, you can go up to the, the third Alpha Wild Claw, but you could see some of those games to where we got these awkward draws to where we just had a bunch of like six drops and stuff and we couldn't play anything. Uh, I was, was kind of partial to Mighty Poro, but kind of do as you will there. And then, of course, these spells are all up for debate. Uh, the, you definitely want to play three sisters. Three might be too expensive, but you can kind of see these places to where uh, the Entomb is extremely good or the Flash Freeze is extremely good. Uh, so the, you can see where Troll Chant is bad against certain decks, but then extremely good against anything that's kind of like board control based. Um, and then Friendship is is fine. You know, this is kind of our answer to uh, the, the vulnerableness we have to Papercraft Dragons. Uh, I'm curious if, you know, these kind of decks really pop off and you need to protect your units from Papercraft Dragon and people kind of catch on to playing in Tomb style cards and Bounce style cards if something like Friendship uh, doesn't punch up a little bit in value. And so it's something to keep in mind. Uh, it's not something I really want multiple copies of, but it does give us some uh, pretty decent interactivity out here. And so pretty good one there as well. But hey, that was a fun one. I hope everyone uh, enjoyed the video. You maybe uh, learned how to, uh, to to dragon up. Oh, can we use dragon and D's nuts? I love that D's nuts one. <laughs> the the question is, do you like dragons? And you say what? You say you want to dragon D's nuts? 
Classic. It's good stuff right there. And so we won't put that in the title, but that's what we hope you learn from this video. <laughs> you maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. Uh, this is Bust, and we thank you for being here.